If you've been following my channel since the very beginning, chances are you may have seen me do some playthroughs on a few cultured games, as well as reviewing a few. It should be noted that I have a whole bunch of cultured games on both the Switch and the PS4. Some of them are indie, while some are from well-established franchise. Hey, I just love the raunchiness and fan service being in such niche games. And no matter the genre, I'm obviously going to check them out as long as they pique my interest. Goki Genyo everyone, Star the Protagonist is here, and today I will be showing off a few cultured games that I have both owned and played. Some of them you've probably already seen on the channel, while some I'll be showing off for the first time. Either way, some of these games could be good recommendations for you. So if this video does it well enough, I might make another one in the near future. And if you don't want to miss on, out on that, make sure you subscribe with notifications on. With that being said, let's get started. Galgun 2 is the fourth entry in the Galgun series created by NT Creates, the developers behind some of the Mega Man games. Now I did play the Galgun Double Peace back in early 2020, and I think it's the raunchiest game in the series. However, I'd argue that Galgun 2 is the best in the series. Unlike the previous entries in even Galgun Returns, this one doesn't have you cursed with euphoria and has to find your true love before sunset to avoid being an anime fan on prom night, no. Now this time, you're helping out an angel named Risu, who is in need of fulfilling her quota. Yeah, I think I know where Lethal Company got their inspiration from, but anyway. Romance is now a side story rather than being part of the main story. During the day, you're with their childhood friend Nanako, and during the night, you can talk to Chiru, the girl next door who is a major shut-in and has a deep passion for retro games. And since this game doesn't have bad, normal, and true endings, it all depends on which girl you spend the most time with. So it can be either Nanako, Chiru, or even Risu. But the gameplay is the same as the previous games. It's a rail shooter where you're shooting down schoolgirls with euphoria. No longer are you stationary as you're now able to look up in any direction to spot any girls that are close by. Some girls are corrupted thanks to Kurna's minions, but you can either shoot them down or suck them up. And by upgrading the railgun twice with the help of Chiru, you strip them down to their lingerie. Yeah, I'm surprised that the school didn't face any lawsuits due to this. Since this game doesn't have any multiple endings or stats to balance it, in order to get an ending, Galgun 2 makes it a lot easier for me to play. And graphically, this game looks amazing. Sure, it's more tame than Double Piece, but it still has a very good amount of fan service that I actually enjoy. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but I do recommend starting with Double Piece first if you want to know more about Shinobu and Maya since these two make an appearance in the sequel. And if you have a VR set, it should be noted that you can play Galgun 2 with the headset in the form of Galgun VR. Now, of course, I've done a playthrough of Simon Kaga Estival Versus, so if you want, you can check it out on the top right corner. It's a hack and slash game, and it's the fifth mainline entry in the series. You still have the previous 22 characters from Shinobi Versus, but now we're introduced to five new ones that are part of the story. We got the Mikago sisters starring Renka, the oldest sister, Hanabi, the middle child, and Kafuru, the youngest of the three. There's Sayori, aka Jasmine, the grandmother of Asuka, and Ryuki, the deceased older sister of Ryubi and Ryuna. Every character plays differently due to the weapons they have, but the gameplay is still relatively the same. So it all depends on which character you join the most. Pressing the L1 button will have your character transforming into their shinobi form, and if they have more than 5 scrolls, they can perform an ultimate ninja art. However, you can activate frantic mode, which strips them down to the bare essentials, but increase their powers. You can do this by pressing the R1 and the triangle button together, and when you do so, you slide the cursor onto the middle button for the PS4. By doing this, you can go into frantic mode. Though if they added the super frantic mode, this game would have gone from an M rating to an A rating. Estable Versus is loads of fun with lots of good fan service and gameplay, and I highly recommend you give this game a shot. Now, this is a game that I actually did a review on, so you can also check that out in the top right corner. But to summarize, a cute maid was hired into cleaning a mansion, but would end up running into a festation of dust bunnies, so it's up to her to get rid of them. The gameplay and premise is similar to the likes of Super Monkey Ball, except you're a maid inside a marble, and you have to roll over dust bunnies. 
If LP5 dust bunnies you collect, you'll unlock very naughty images of our beloved maid in such raunchy escapades. I really enjoy playing this game from time to time. It has a lot of good lewdness mixed with pretty cool gameplay, and the fact that it's only $8 makes it a huge steal. So get it on either Steam or Nintendo Switch. And if Shady Corner ever think of making a third entry, please have a certain ghost made as a DLC character. I was considering making a review on this game, but I think it's better to talk about it here. Hentai vs Evo is an indie third person shooter where you play as voluptuous anime girls and shoot down zombies and demons and grim reapers to rescue other anime girls. And by that I mean you only have three girls to choose from. But at the very least you can customize them. You can increase the size of their thighs and titties. You can make them tall and short. You can change the color of their hair and skin. And you can change their clothes to have them wearing more or less. And perhaps the best part is that you can turn uncensored mode on. If you're playing it on Steam, they can be fully nude. If you're playing on a Switch like I am, the only thing you'll see is the naughty pillows in full display. However, the PS4 version is completely censored. Not surprising from a company that is both extremely sensitive and hypocritical. This game doesn't really have much going for it other than the customization of the characters. The gameplay is okay, but trying to aim can be a real pain in the tush. Even with a pro controller, you can only choose between an assault rifle or a shotgun, jumping and sprinting isn't all that great, and it doesn't offer much either for an indie title. Once you play those three stages, that's about it, which is why I didn't bother making a review on this game. I ain't into doing three minute reviews. If anything, I can only recommend this to those who are very interested in playing as anime girls in a third person shooter. While not a bad game, there are still better indie titles than this. Even indie titles that aren't even heavy on fan service. Speaking of indie titles, we are on the last one in this video. And this time, it's a visual novel. Lucy Got Problems is a game that I've picked up but never touched it yet until this video. However, this is just a teaser for a video that I have planned for February. It's not going to be on Valentine's Day, that's for sure. But it will be on that specific month. Now, as I said before, this game is a visual novel as you follow through the story of our beloved succubus protag, Lucy. She's ditzy, perverted, and is also cultured just like the other Lucy. Her mission is to collect info on the elves and to obtain the Orb of Fate. However, unlike other visual novels, you'll have to choose which action to take, and some of them could end up being in the wrong choice, so be sure to choose wisely. Personally, I think this shouldn't even be in a game. I think it should have just been a regular visual novel in my opinion. And depending on which action you will take, will determine the path you will walk. You may have also noticed the good amount of fan service in this game. They shake, they bounce, they jiggle, and that's pretty much it. This game also has some really good yet questionable CGs, like the one where Lucy meets a big busted ferret spirit who is wearing nothing but a red scarf, or when she befriends a big busted elf named Ellie. How about the CG of her trying to catch dickfish with her boobs? I am not joking. There's actually a CG where Lucy has to catch fish that are in the shape of penises. This game is really something else, I tell ya. If you know what you're doing, this game should take you almost the amount of time to finish one of the Neko Parra games. So if you're interested in indie titles, you may find some enjoyment in Lucy Got Problems. It's on both the Steam and Nintendo Switch. But if for some reason you want to see the uncensored dick fish, I recommend getting it on Steam. Everything else is the same on both versions, just like the price tag being $8, which is honestly a good deal. Simon Kagwa Peach Ball is a spin-off from the franchise and is the first Simon Kagwa game to make its debut on the Nintendo Switch. So yeah, it's about damn time. One day, Haruka started running an arcade shop and was hosting a video game tournament, with Yomi and Murasaki making it into the grand finals. However, things went south as Ryono accidentally touched one of Haruka's potions, mistaking it as a soap. And now she's transformed into a bitch. And not in a disrespectful way. The potion would then spread with Yomi turning into a tanuki, Murasaki as a bear, Yumi as a pussy, and Asuka as a bunny. You choose which character route you want to play first, and you have to restore the girls back to their human selves. In this pinball game, you have to keep playing in order to complete missions that will help increase the meter in order to reach the sexy challenge. Doing this will have you complete a mini game before sending the cute ninja girl back into the machine. Should you reach the super sexy challenge, that's where you have to hit the pinballs directly at their assets in order to beat their level. It can be either Asuka's bun buns or Yumi's cactastic dump truck. Hey, I didn't make the rules here, so Murasaki is going to have to bear with her booty getting hit with pinballs. And don't think that Haru Haru is safe either, because she's the main reason behind this catastrophe. So no matter which character you choose, it will always end with her rightfully getting punished. 
in the ass and the titties in full display. The game does recommend you use the Joy-Cons thanks, thanks to the HD rumble controls, but you can also use the Joy-Con grip, the Pro Controller, or you can play this game handheld as well. So it doesn't matter which playstyle you choose because the gameplay is still the same. So if you're interested in sexy ninja girls with pinball hijinks, Seven Kago Peach Ball is the game for you. That is if you're okay with not seeing your favorite girls that aren't any of the six. I personally prefer to see Shiki in the game, but at least I have more Saki and Haruka. And now we're on to the last game of this list and is yet another game that I did a playthrough on. And I'm talking about ne Mega Dimension Neptunia V2. It's the fourth mainline entry in the Neptunia series, where it centers on Neptune, Nepgear, and new character Uzume Tanoboshi. Much like his predecessors, this is a turn-based RPG. You choose four to 16 playable characters in your party and try to defeat any enemies that are in your way. You can choose to do basic attacks and combos, use certain skills you have as long as you have SP, use items to boost your HP, SP, attack power, etc. But the highlight to me are the HDD transformations. V2 has a good portion of fan service, from the jiggle physics to the transformation sequences, as well as the CGs. It's interesting to see Nepgear, Uzume, and Older Nep all together in a tight hot bath. These are moments that the later games are lacking nowadays. The full length transformation sequences and the fan service CGs, not to mention the lack of jiggle physics in the later games as well. That was one half of Neptunia's identity, and I'm hoping they can go back to this for the fifth main game. There are also DLC characters you can buy. They each cost less than $5, I believe. So if you're interested in characters like Nitro Plus, she's still available to buy. But yeah, I really enjoyed playing B2. It's arguably the best game in the franchise. So if you're interested, you can get it either on Steam, PS4, or Switch. Either one is fine. All of these games that I've mentioned, well, at least six of them, are very good games to try out and are well worth your time. And no matter which sexy video game is the raunchiest, as long as they are not censored or filled with any of that DEI bullshit, that's all that matters. As long as I can have fun with a naughty game, I ain't gonna stop playing it. Let me know which game you're interested in out of these picks. And like I said before, if this video does well, I'll do a follow up to this. But until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a startastic day everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.